Is the, it's on now? Okay, great. So, my name is Daniel Snyder. I am an open source fanboy. I'm highly allergic to license keys, so if you brought any license keys, please do not open them until after the presentation. I worked with OpenStack for the last two and a half years at, my com at a, a company called Breakwater, um, but now I'm taking some time off to learn new things. I'm doing some machine learning at SickKids, and I'm making robots with my friends at Ryerson. Um, but how many of you have, t have used OpenStack on a day-to-day -day basis? Raise your hands. How many of you have installed OpenStack and play with, played with it? Keep your hands up if you've used it. And how many of you have heard the words OpenStack uttered? <laughs> everyone, almost everyone. Awesome, okay. So this is only a 10 minute talk, so I'm just giving my thoughts on OpenStack and how it compares to the rest of similar software and what I think about it. So something came to me in, uh, well, while I was listening to the keynote as well, and it was that you're like that she was talking about learning on your own, and it it like led me to think how much can you learn on your own? Like how much? What's the limit of like your understanding as a human? Humans have limits, um, and OpenStack is a good way to abstract some of what you have to understand, so you don't have to know so much. It abstracts it but it's also so complicated and still early that it still is hard to use. That's kind of the thesis. So picture yourself in your workshop developing your codes and uh, you're internalizing some really complicated shit and your boss's boss calls you. You've been kicked into high gear. Everyone, your code is hot shit and everyone wants one. What are you gonna do to upgrade your workshop? Are you gonna throw money at AWS? And, and buy web services? Are you gonna throw money at VMware? No, you just make bananas that are connected to the internet of things. <laughs> so enter OpenStack. You can build yourself a super scalable, very flexible, upgraded workshop and call it a tier four data center. And this is a picture in Toronto actually in the 60s. It's not OpenStack, it's IBM, but anyways. What is OpenStack? It's open source cloud software launched by NASA and Rackspace in 2010. It's massively scalable, it's managed by a foundation, and it's rapidly taking over the cloud world. I stole this slide source to Ben. Thank you, Ben. I'm talking about it here because it's based on Python, Python, Python. Um, those are, these are two main components on GitHub, Nova and Neutron, I'll come back to that. And they use pretty much all Python, except like 1% of Smarty. I'm not sure what that is, but it sounds cool. <laughs> so what is the difference between like OpenStack and Amazon? Well, they're very similar. OpenStack you can actually install on your own servers, though. You can have a private installation. And so it's not as much of a public cloud. A lot of the, con the features of Amazon Web Services can map, can map to features in OpenStack. So that's pretty cool. Um, OpenStack, compared to VMware, um, has this, like you need to understand this concept of pets versus cattle. Pets are servers that you are hand lovingly crafting. And when your pets get sick, you have to nurse them back to health. But in the OpenStack world, you would like to think about your servers as cattle. You don't give your, your servers cute names like you would for pets, you give them numbers. And, and when they get sick, you get another one. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, animal like rights and animal rights people and vegans and so everything. Is, you get you get another one. Anyways, moving on. So VMware is more popular. It's been around since forever. They have a easy to use interface, and your VMs live around like six, stick around for a really long time. Um, VMware leads to vendor lock-in. But on the other hand, OpenStack gives you standardized APIs that give you the power of a global network of public and private clouds. And you can, if you've built your cloud in VMware, you've, you're stuck. But if you've built it on OpenStack, you can use the same automation scripts, the same code, point it at another cloud, and it just works. So OpenStack, because of its APIs, it's really, everything is made with an API. Everything is like REST, 
HTTP accessible, you can do a web request. So it's very codable. It makes your infrastructure act like code. And it, that enables something called DevOps. Put your hand up if you've heard of DevOps. It's like a super buzzword. Ch a pro tip, change your title on LinkedIn to DevOps, and you will get so many requests about jobs. <laughs> Okay, so, and DevOps, let's see, I've got four minutes left. Uh, so DevOps, I guess you've, you've heard of it, but like, the way I explain it is it's putting operations tasks, operations tasks are like installing servers and maintaining them, updating them, but it's, it's codifying that. It's coding the, the configuration with configuration management tools of your servers. It's uh, coding auto-scaling, and OpenStack has like a, First, cl first class support for auto scaling through a tool called, a component called Heat. Here is a list of components. In the center are core components, and on the outside are less core. They're like, they're like uh, they have some official recognition and support from the foundation, but if you are going to have an OpenStack cloud, you at least need to have these, like not Swift actually, but Anyways, let's go over them. So Glance is an image service, and it stores the OS images, the operating systems. And Nova uses images from Glance. Nova is the compute engine. It, it builds on top of hypervisors. Actually, all of OpenStack builds on top of other projects. It's like this massive like, collection of abstraction of different tools. It's really cool. So Nova can, can use under the, underneath the covers as its hypervisor. It can use KVM, which is the open source version of VMware, but it can also use VMware. It can use Hyper-V. Um, and then another core service is called Neutron for networking. You can use Open vSwitch. You can plug into um, drivers that have been released by big companies like Cisco and other networking companies. Um, so then another core, core service is Cinder, which provides your, your block devices, your hard drives, virtual hard drives, for your operating systems to live on. And then Swift is an object store. That's like your S3 from the Amazon world, which allows you to serve files for like web apps, but you can install ho whole operating systems on it. And then Keystone is your identity provider, login, username, password, or it'll plug into an existing Active Directory, which has your corporate usernames and passwords. So that's like the, and then there's a whole bunch of other cool services which I would love to talk about, like Solometer for, for telemetry and tracking and metering. Um, a really awesome one is Heat, which is orchestrating many servers, like spin up three, three servers in like a three-tier web app and like install some software and stuff. But anyways, I need to move on. This is getting crazy. The next slide is even more crazy. It's super complicated and notor notorious. This is the evil complicated diagram of OpenStack. And it's, this is a real diagram. Like, this actually explains stuff, but it's like, explains how, like, complicated it is. <laughs> like, seriously. So, um, sorcery number one is complexity, and there's some quotes here of people complaining. Uh, number two is it's difficult to deploy. Like, OpenStack has far too many components, and is, uh, it's cut off here or something. It's only for specialized deployments. Like that, that's true. Y your deployment is specialized because you've had to like go to so many configuration files and install s and, and figure out the configuration file for a service and install like a billion packages for other uh, other like services within OpenStack. So it's just complicated to install. But despite all this, it's super popular. It's like the second most successful open source project probably after after Linux kernel itself. It's got like 6,000 developers. It's got like hundreds of organizations who are contributing. And um, <clears throat> yeah, plenty of people doing cool stuff with it. And the, the way they like organize their, their development is super cool. Like they have, of course, a, an issue tracker. And then they, they take like, say, a top level issue, like adding a new huge feature. And they'll put out like a blueprint, which is like a basic uh, idea of what's going to happen. And then every six months they have conferences, so they have like this developer summit where the people interested will get together in like a big room with uh, with people um, on, e like everyone will have their laptop and they'll have like a shared document on Etherpad, 
when everyone's like editing the document and kind of like drafting a spec, which comes next. You can make your spec of your feature, and then people start like coding it, and they have really good code reviews. And I am done, so please clap me off. <laughs> Thank you.